오늘 방송에선 최근 미국 정부 방송인 Voice of America에서 대만 전쟁이 만일에 일어난다면 주한미군은 어떻게 대응할지에 대해 토론 영상이 있었습니다. 영상이 길어서 대만 전쟁과 한반도에 관련된 내용만 정리를 했습니다. Secretary Colby, Taiwan has elected a pro-U.S. president. The scenario of Chinese invasion of Taiwan draws a, still a lot of attention. Will China encourage North Korea to create a two-front war in Northeast Asia? I think that's a very real risk. I mean, I think, look, the danger of a war over Taiwan in this decade and even possibly in this year, uh, is, it's a very significant risk. Now, if China decides to go to war with the United States, That is a huge, as former Secretary of Defense Harold Brown put it, a cosmic roll of the dice. So in that context, if you're China, you're going to do everything that's feasible and tenable to make it more likely you succeed. And in that context, encouraging North Korea to cause problems on the peninsula and with the U.S. forces there, et cetera, that actually seems like a relatively small thing compared to some of the other things that China would be countenancing in that circumstance. So I think this is a very real scenario, and I think it dovetails with Kim Jong-un's own Uh, you know, expressed ambitions that you mentioned earlier in the show, Unjung. So I think this is a very real risk. What does South Korea need to do? South Korea needs to be prepared to defend itself because in the context, even if North Korea were to strike first, the United States needs to withhold critical forces in the event that China gets involved because a Chinese uh, uh, victory is of far more significance to the United States and others than a, than a North Korean uh, action. So it's very important that South Korea be essentially the one concerned with the defense of South Korea. And I think it's very important because if the United States is defeated by China along the first island chain, who is going to protect South Korea from China? Nobody, right? So South Korea has a rational strategic interest in ensuring that doesn't happen. Now, I'm not saying that South Korea needs to become directly involved in the defense of Taiwan. To the contrary, I don't think that would be very useful. South Korea has its hands full defending its own territory against North Korea and the possibility of a Chinese in in intervention as well, which is a serious possibility. Um, so that, but, but South Korea has to understand that it needs to be prepared to defend itself and needs to be prepared to understand that U.S. forces are going to swing to deal uh, with, with the Chinese. Dr. Oh Hannan, U.S. forces Korea are getting ready to fight tonight with North Koreans. Their purpose is to defend South Korea from North Korea. What Secretary Colby is saying is U.S. forces Korea should be available to go against the possible Chinese um, aggression in the region. What are your take? It certainly is true that if there were a war pitting the United States against China over Taiwan, that it would be very hard to predict the outcome, uh, especially if it were a naval blockade scenario. It would be a temptation for the United States to want to use air power in, in Korea from Kunsan or Osan. But I also think the United States would have to respect the views of Seoul in determining uh, whether it could use South Korean territory to launch ongoing uh, air patrols or combat operations. in the context of the Taiwan Strait crisis. And we do have to appreciate as Americans that South Korea could have different interests in a Taiwan Strait contingency than we do. And as a sovereign nation, it gets to make its own decisions about how its territory might be used in such a war. Uh, so the United States may want to relocate those, those air squadrons that are currently in Korea to Japan or elsewhere. And South Korea shouldn't try to prevent that. But I think South Korea would have the prerogative to decide if we use Unsan and Osan for ongoing operations. South Korea is a sovereign nation. The United States is a sovereign nation. Where, you know, South Korea is dependent on the United States for its security. So I think obviously South Koreans should be realistic about the political impact of a statement that you were not going to get involved in, a, in a, you know, essentially what could become World War III with China. So I would just counsel South Koreans to be prudent about how they represent the United States. That's not the same thing as saying, oh, you need to get involved in the war. with China, but I think it's, it's saying, look, we are on your side, we are going to do our part, and we're not going to hold down your forces. We're not going to say USFK. Whether U.S. forces operate from Korean territory is a different, I think, is a, is a more specific question where there could be you know, reasonable debate, but whether they're relocated or not. But I think the big concern would be if the South Korean government said, no, no, you can't, you can't move USFK, you know, this is the, and, and we're neutral. That, that kind of situation would be, uh, would be very worrisome. But I also think just from South Korea's point of view, If there is a war, God forbid, with China and the United States loses, South Korea loses too by definition. So South Korea has a strong interest in avoiding that outcome, but we also need to recognize, of course, that there's the more immediate threat to South Korea from North Korea, and that's important for Americans to understand. 자, 이 영상에 나온 요점들을 요약해 보겠습니다. 첫째, 
미국의 입장은 이렇습니다. 대만에 전쟁이 나면 대한민국도 대만 방어에 협조를 하는 것이 좋다. 둘째, 대만 방어에 한국이 협조를 안 하면 주한미군 공군은 일본에 주둔시키겠다. 셋째, 대만 전쟁과 한반도 전쟁이 동시에 일어나면 한반도 방어는 대한민국이 독자적으로 해야 한다. 그리고 북한과 중국의 공격을 혼자서 막아낼 수 있어야 한다. 도널드 트럼프 전 미국 대통령이 임기 마지막까지 주한미군을 철수하려 했다고 트럼프 정부 당시 미 국방부 장관이 밝혔습니다. 또 주한미군 주둔 비용 협상과 관련해 트럼프 대통령이 한국인들은 다루기 끔찍하다며 폄하했다는 폭로도 나왔습니다. 그동안 대한민국 정부는 트럼프 전 대통령의 요구 때문에 주한미군 주둔 부담금을 많이 내고 있었습니다. 대한민국 정부는 주둔비를 많이 지불하고 있었지만 결국 대만의 전쟁이 나면 주한미군은 한반도 방어보다는 대만 방어에 투입될 가능성이 높다는 것입니다. 내 일할 줄 알았다.